not in my province, uh, not my part of my rationale in life to uh, look you up for things that will kill you because um, it's rather not my gig, if you see what I mean. So we've always rather turned off that. Next slide. The, the two things that are happening in the surgical world for intractable uh, cluster headache are two new, what are called neurostimulation procedures. Um, the one that's uh, but we've talked about a bit now. The one that's talked about the most probably is, this, is the deep brain um, stimulation. So the Italians uh, in Milan uh, took those coordinates that I showed you for the grey bit of the brain and the little blob and put a brain stimulator in there uh, in a number of patients. Now they've reported out 21 actually at the American Heart Society a couple of weeks ago. I listed most of the other cases that have been uh, reported. Uh, Phil Starr has done some at uh, our institution. I'm trying to, well no, successfully convince him to, um, to add occipital nerve stimulation to his repertoire so we, we, can, uh, we can do these things. There's no doubt there's a group of people with chronic, uh, with intractable cluster headache, typically chronic cluster headache, where you know the medicine approach has failed and we need to do other things. Um, the problem with, uh, with the brain stimulation, which sort of turned it off a little bit for the moment, is that um, you have to put something in the brain, a bit of metal and plastic, and uh, it doesn't seem like the Lord made the brain for metal and plastic and didn't make the skull for drilling terribly much. And, uh, well, and certainly uh, one of the Jean Sherman's cases died. I mean, that's a, a real drag, obviously. <laughs> Life-threatening procedures are not something that, um, that we want to take on uh, lightly. Um, so, next slide. What is interesting about this area, which is, which um, from a, like an understanding point of view, was really quite quite remarkable. If you go back in the literature, there's a there's a fellow called Sarno who developed a procedure uh, for lesioning both sides of the brain in the same area that we were describing in cluster headache for people with um, really crazy behaviour, uh, self injurious and antisocial behaviour. Surgical colleague in London who's done a few of these uh, describes a patient wandering around a, a town in northern Sweden cutting cats' throats and um, doing all sorts of bizarre things with glass to themselves. It's a really, really troubled person. Um, and, uh, psychosurgery is a complex thing. At any rate, these procedures are done for people like that. And what the surgeons noticed was that if you do the procedure, the lesion procedure, while the patient's awake, because a lot of Brain surgery is done by, uh, with local anaesthetic, fixing uh, bits of metal on the skull and using what's called stereotaxis and imaging to know where you are because you don't want to plonk the, you don't want to make a hole in the brain in the wrong place. Uh, it's very unhelpful. Um, so they, they tend to keep people awake so they can make them wiggle their fingers and stuff so they make sure they're not having a problem. At any rate, if you keep people awake when you're doing this Sarno procedure and you turn the stimulator on, um, they get restless, aggressive. Um, agitated and want to move about, just like you guys. Um, uh, only thing, of course, when you're having brain surgery, being restless, aggressive, and moving about is very unhelpful. Um, so they anaesthetise and uh, that's that. But it's quite interesting that um, this area of the brain certainly seems to be involved in the disorder in a context of, of, of this, this, this very distinct uh, behaviour for the patients with cluster headache have. That will tell us something about that biology, and of course, seems to play a role in the context that you can uh, that you turn it off to, um, with uh, stimulation. Next slide. So the other development that's going on is suboccipital um, nerve stimulation. Again, for uh, a medically intractable cluster headache, I'm putting up some some of the examples of some of the cases that, uh, the, in the literature. Uh, next slide. Um, I've been interested in this because uh, it strikes me that it would be useful to find a way of, uh, of controlling medically intractable uh, cluster headache without um, putting people at risk of a procedure they might die from. So this is a good place to go first. These are the first patients that we um, implanted and um, I have uh, now started to see people in, in San Francisco to for evaluation for this. So it's a way forward for some patients. Nothing is good for everyone, but as I say, small increments. Um, 
these are pretty intractable people, had all the tricks, um, not all responding necessarily to occipital nerve blocks. And what happens is that the electrodes are placed um, just at the back of the skull, um, a little tingly feeling when they're on. People who like them say that's a pleasant um, feeling. Next slide. And you know, some of the patients do remarkably well. First lesson um, of this business, and it's a lesson probably for uh, people with uh, chronic uh, pain problems, is to get your expectations right. I, I guess I thought that they'd be implanted and like they'd all have Christmas and that'll be that. But it's not that simple, of course. But I guess for the people who, the people who are really well are really well, the people who are better, are grateful for being better. Um, and I, I'm, it teaches me a lesson how awful it must be to have the problem, and if you improve it, that that's a good thing. We're always trying to kick a home, you know, score a home run, but uh, for some of these people, just getting to the next base seemed to be a really big step forward. I guess after 25 years with the problem, maybe maybe that's true. The guy who did the best, um, when I look, uh, you know, got himself uh, a new motorbike and went back to work, blah, 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 so he's going to kill himself, um, that would be really unhealthy. Like, asked him if he'd leave his brain when he did, he didn't, you know, put, wear a helmet so he didn't mush his head up when he was like, when he died. Use of his brain, anyway. Um, battery failures, I mean, it's technical problems. But you know, 10 years ago we used to carry around uh, mobile phones, we thought they were cool and they were the size of a bleeding brick. Um, now you carry around a little mobile phone, you hardly know you had it in your pocket. So the technology is just going to scream ahead. Be, this will be an interesting area. Not for everyone, but for some. Next slide. Uh, we've done 14 of these in London, um, so, and, and the results are more or less the same in, in, in the age in, in Belgium where they've been done. I think that a number of them have been done in this country. I don't think one centre's got a big experience. I think it would be better if there were less centres doing more, so they got more expert at it, instead of lots of people poking around doing one or two finding all the mistakes that everyone already found five years ago. Um, I think that's unhelpful. Uh, in, 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 in a large country, one has to expect a little bit of variability. And the general, one interesting thing is there's no relationship to these nerve blocks. Some of you might have had these occipital nerve blocks. They're useful for some patients, not useful for others. They don't seem to predict anything that's going on um, with these stimulators. In fact, nothing predicts the outcome from the stimulator. Um, getting the diagnosis right is helpful. Um, but the, the response to previous therapy doesn't predict it, the response to the blocks don't predict it, and the trial of stimulation business, just putting the lead in and having a battery and wandering around for a week, is completely useless. It's worse than that, it's stupid, because the, the, effect, the best effect of these stimulators takes between three and six months. So, while a few patients will get a benefit in the first week, the problem is that if you think that by doing these trials of stimulation, you're going to work out who's ultimately going to get the best benefit, you won't. And what you'll do is consign a group of people who would have got a benefit to nothing uh, useful. So we don't do the uh, we don't do the trials. I see no logic um, in, in doing them. We haven't found out any more side effects. The problem is battery failure. But, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm optimistic. If we can put people on Mars, we can certainly get decent battery. Um, next slide. Thanks. 